Greetings. Today's video is uh, in response to a question that I've been asked repeatedly. And anytime I get a repeated question, it seems to me like it might be a good topic for a video so that that question can be answered once and for all. And that question is, when you remove a power transformer from a junk chassis, or when you just come across or acquire a loose power transformer with a bunch of leads, how can you tell what lead is what voltage? Okay, how can you identify the leads from the transformer? So let's look today at a reasonably uh, efficient and common sense way to do that. First off, if you're going to remove this transformer from a chassis, uh, like I did, this is from a Baldwin organ amplifier, a big one. Okay, and when I removed it, all I did was see uh, where each of the wires went and I labeled them. I also wrote down on a piece of paper um, the types and numbers of tubes that were powered by each of those leads. And then uh, from that, I then know the identity of the leads. And I also know the current capacity for each of the windings. This is the ideal situation. But what if you're wandering the aisles of some flea market somewhere and come across this beauty and just can't resist. It's like five dollars, you know, that's like a dollar for every three pounds or so of metal. Um, then and the leads have been removed from the chassis and just unlabeled. OK, how the heck can we figure out what wire does what? And just to make this more realistic, I'm going to remove all the labels that I have on the wires, making it just like the one you drag home from the flea market. And let's see if we can't figure out what lead does what. Okay, step one, uh, let's take a look at a diagram of a typical power transformer and see the types of wires that we can expect to find. All power transformers are going to have a primary. On one side, this is where the fuse, the switch, and the plug are. And on the other side, you're going to have uh, a pair of wires that are going to provide the 5 volts of alternating current to the rectifier tube. Now, this is optional. If you had a solid state rectifier in the chassis that the transformer came from, there will be no 5 volt winding. So if you have a 5 volt winding, you can use a tube rectifier. If you don't, then you'll have to use a solid state or diode rectifier. So we've got a pair of wires for the primary, and we've got maybe, or in fact most likely, a pair of wires for the 5 volt uh, filament of uh, voltage for the tube rectifier. Next, let's drop down here to the 6.3 volt uh, AC output from the transformer. There will be two wires and perhaps a third. Uh, many transformers have a center tapped 6.3 volt output and if you ground that center tap it will really cut down on the hum in your amplifier. So it's a good thing if it has a center tap. If it doesn't, well there are ways to get around that. Okay, but anyway, we'll be looking for either two or three wires in the 6.3 volt output from this transformer. Next, let's look at the high voltage uh, outputs from the transformer, and there'll always be two with a center tap, whether it's from a tube chassis or a diode solid state rectified chassis. For a full wave rectifier, you must always have a grounded center tap. So you will always have one, two, three wires for your high voltage, and maybe a fourth, this one's optional, if it had uh, a tap here that allows you to uh, bias your fixed bias output tubes. This will be the 30 or 40 volts that amps like uh, the Fender uh, Deluxe Reverb and others use for the biasing purposes. So you'll always have three wires, the two high voltage in the center tap, and maybe a fourth bias wire. So worst case scenario, we will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven wires coming out of our bargain flea market transformer. Now, uh, because we're going to use an ohmmeter to help us to uh, identify these leads, let's take a look at what we'll be looking for with our ohmmeter. First of all, uh, the high voltage 
winding is by far the largest winding and it's also fairly small diameter wire. So the highest resistance that we will find on the leads that come out of this transformer will be between this wire and this wire, the two high voltage wires. Uh, now we'll also find a third wire which will split the difference between them as far as resistance. Let's say that it's uh, 38 ohms uh, from here to here with our ohm meter and the center tap then is going to be at around 19 from either side so that determines the center tap. The bias tap is going to have continuity with all three of those wires and it will split the difference between the center tap and one of the other high voltage wires. So this winding will have the highest resistance. Second highest resistance will be the primary leads. In other words, between this lead and this lead will have the second highest resistance and it's going to drop down a lot. If this one was like 38 ohms, uh, this is going to be more like about one and a half or something like that. Then at the very bottom end of the resistance scale we're going to have the 5 volt winding which is very small as you can see and very low resistance and we will have the 6.3 volt winding which is also very small. Now unless you've got the darndest ohmmeter in the world uh, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between the 5 volt and 6.3 volt with your ohmmeter. Okay you're going to be down in fractions of an ohm and uh, it's just uh, there are other ways I'll show you a better way to tell the difference. Okay, now let's take a look at our transformer, and as promised, I removed all of my carefully applied labels. Okay, so I'm sort of starting off where you are when you get home from the flea market. Now, one uh, thing you can do is look for a number on the transformer. This has got a 512-21358A number. You can look that up on the internet and hope that maybe some uh, helpful soul has posted a diagram showing the outputs with the color code for the output wires. I'm never that lucky or very rarely that lucky. Uh, so let's act like we checked on the internet, couldn't find that number, and now we're left to our own resources here. Well, first off, if you're lucky, wires that go together will be twisted. Remember, this, these outputs are all AC. So uh, to cut down on hum in an amplifier, they tend to twist the AC wires. So in this case, the pairs that go together are fairly obvious. We've got three twisted pairs here and then a couple loose wires. Okay, uh, now even if they weren't twisted, you can still look and see that the colors are similar. Here's two yellows, two greens, and two oranges, and two blacks. Okay, so twisted or not, the color should help you. Now I wish there was an international standard color code for the wires, okay, whereas this is going to be 5 volts anywhere in the universe. But uh, I wouldn't trust that. Um, actually, certain colors do tend to be associated with certain voltages, but I would not bet my life on it, okay? So let's see here if we can figure out We've got four pairs of wires. Let's try to figure out what each pair is used for. First, I will say that almost always the primary leads are black. Okay, so this is probably the primary. This is the 120 volt in the United States that we're going to plug it into, uh, into the wall. And then uh, the, we have yellow, we have green, and then we have a green with stripes. And one thing you'll notice is that center taps tend to be about the same color as the wires that they are the center taps for, but they will have stripes. So this one is sort of a darker green, but it has stripes. So I'm thinking, just guessing, before I start using my ohmmeter or anything else, that this right here, the striped one, is going to be the center tap for the two green wires. And I look over here and there's a very faint yellow type of banding on this orange wire. I think it was probably red at one time. And I'm thinking this is probably the center tap over here for these wires. So I have it sort of sorted out here. I know that my high voltage will have to have a center tap and I know that my 6.3 volts will have to have a center tap. So this is either 6.3 or high voltage. 
this is either 6.3 or high voltage. This one, by exclusion, then is probably the 5 volt uh, filament um, heater output wires, and uh, this is going to probably be the primary. Another visual clue is that the 5 and 6.3 volt wires carry a lot of current. The high voltage does not carry much current to speak of. It's in milliamps. Whereas your uh, 5 volts for your rectifier and your 6.3 volts for your the rest of your tubes for those their heaters uh, carry like 3 or 4 amps of current. Notice that these wires are noticeably heavier than these wires. Once again then using just common sense I'm going to say primary because it's black 5 volt 6 volt with the center tap high voltage strictly based on wire diameter and color and presence of center taps. Next I'm going to use my trusty ohmmeter and check the, the resistance of the pairs uh, this pair, the black pair, comes out at 1.2 ohms, which would be consistent with the primary, as its color and wire diameter would also tell you. Uh, the 5 volt and presumptive 5 volt and 6.3 volts come out at the lowest uh, uh, resistance uh, reading, so obviously they are the 5 and 6.3. We're not sure which is which right now. However, the center tap here makes it really obvious that this is going to be the 6.3 and this is going to be the 5. And then the puny, skinny, low current carrying, center tapped, high voltage um, leads measured out at 38 ohms. 19 from the center tap to this one, 19 for the center tap to that one. So we got our high voltage and our primary for sure. We're about 99% sure this is 6.3 and this is 5. There is no bias output uh, wire of any sort on this transformer. Now the final test, uh, we make sure that all of the wire tips, uh, the bare wire tips, are not, they're not touching each other or touching metal. We hook on some alligator clips to the uh, primary input. We plug it into our current limiter and then observing very careful technique, plug in the current limiter and test the voltage output from the pairs to see if they match our expectations. 5 volts, 6.3 volts with the center tap, and the high voltage should be up like 350, 400, 450 volts. Okay, and if they all match our expectations, then we have thoroughly mapped this transformer. Then finally, I'm going to use some masking tape to label uh, the wires, the identity of them, in case you know I have a stroke or fall down a flight of stairs or get amnesia or something. Uh, this will help me in the future if I'm not going to use this uh, transformer immediately. Also, I found that the high voltage was 372 volts AC, which I labeled on there, and that will help me when I decide what kind of circuit this would be a good power transformer for. Well, there you have it. Uh, it's sort of like a little forensic challenge where you go in and look for clues, colors, twist, diameter of the wires, things like that to help you. And see, even without the ohmmeter or without plugging in this transformer, uh, we had a really good idea of the uh, nature of each of these output wires. The uh, wires that they worked with, which ones were center taps, everything was already figured out. We merely confirmed it with our plug-in test. And I would advise you be careful at all times, of course, and don't be reckless. Don't be in a hurry to just plug it in and see. Uh, go ahead and go through it. Spend a little time trying to identify your leads first uh, and uh, prevent some very unpleasant surprises. Also, always be sure to use your trusty current limiter. Uh, I've posted a video showing you how to build one because uh, if while you're doing this procedure a couple wires touch each other or a short out, it will not allow the transformer to self-destruct. It will prevent the pyrotechnics, the, the fire and smoke and uh, the heart attack that usually follows uh, something like that and also prevent the transformer from self-destructing. Well, that about does it for this video. Uh, I hope that I've successfully uh, answered 
the question that's been asked repeatedly about how to identify the leads of an unknown transformer. Uh, I just want you to know that Rusty and I really appreciate the time that you spend asking those questions and entering uh, really interesting and helpful comments and the time you take to watch our videos. Okay, so we want to wish you the best. Thanks for watching and subscribing, and I hope you stay tuned for future videos. Thanks so much. Rusty, after all your hard work behind the camera, are you ready to chase this giant tennis ball? Are you ready, boy? Here it goes. I'm going to throw the tennis ball. I knew he couldn't resist. What a fine pup.